Hello, Generals. We are back. This is Fiasco with Ultimate General Civil War. This is our Major General Union Let's Play. This is the army right after the battle of Second Bull Run. Uh, we have uh, deliberately not done a great deal of cleanup, um, with the exception of every combat unit in Third Corps picking up a star. Uh, and in the infantry, it is universally the endurance perk. And in the artillery, because it now works, it is universally the uh, ammunition perk. So uh, that's that. Those units that picked up stars in... Uh, it's a shame none of the cavalry did. But those units that picked up stars in the cavalry will be getting um, the cav riding speed, which also includes an efficiency and stamina bonus, uh, and then even if they're shooting units, they're going to get a melee bonus, um, uh, because I'm using them as shock, even if I'm using them to shoot, essentially. So we are heading to, oh, and uh, here are the reputation rewards. There's three cannon types that I could buy with rep that... All of them are guns that, uh, you know, I can buy in great number with cash, and I really don't have a great deal of shortage of cash, so I'm not mega concerned about putting um, a rep into that. So um, the Antietam battle is one where we are tasked with fielding three combat corps, which we can do right now. Um they need to be filled up and reinforced and so forth and so on and that kind of deal. And then we'll do all of those things. And if I can, I'll bring reserve units, but I don't feel a great deal of need to do so even right now. Um, with our existing forces at the moment, we would have near numeric parity with the Confederates, even near brigade parity, which means that their brigades would be about the same size as mine. Um, they do would apparently have a bit of a numbers advantage in guns, but that's always the factor you're going to wrestle with with Major General and the AI. So, in terms of um, I talked about before, you've always got to be kind of keeping an eye on what you need to build towards and what we need to build towards we're already at. We just need to fill up what we've got. In the interim, we have the Battle of Crampton's Gap, wherein, which is what we'll be fighting today, wherein you bring nine troops and move aggressively in an offensive maneuver to try and take basically that little farmhouse there. Uh, interestingly, you can fight the Confederate version of this battle. It's a different battle name. And they have you start here, and then you take this, and the Union kind of fights you from over here, and then they come from up here uh, and try and fight you. And we'll be taking part of Second Corps into that particular battle. They are... A, were chosen because, you know, I needed to build some of the units up and I didn't want to be using um, some of the folks that were near uh, two stars that is. And there's also the Battle of South Mountain, which I'll be handling in the next video. Uh, and this one's really a mess, but it's an opportunity for you to get your full core out there and I'll probably use I-Core for that, trying to keep the experience, you know, relatively balanced between the two of them. Notice this is what I was talking about in the earlier video. I-Core and two-core are basically mirrors of each other. Uh, 11 infantry, you'll notice I've pulled one out of two core just for symmetry. Um, 11 infantry brigades, two uh, skirmisher specialist infantry brigades, four artillery, three cav, and one supply. Um, different generals, obviously. And uh, let's just see if I was to pop I core in there. So there'd be a pretty, pretty big numbers jump or numbers disadvantage. Um, I've deliberately not reformed any of the infantry units because I want these smaller units to draw down scaling and I've taken this unit out of the slot so that I can bring 1st and 2nd Division in their entirety into the Battle of Crampton's Gap. I've pulled uh, the unit down here, 17th Infantry. They're the only one with their only one with um, rifles, except for some of these guys up here, and they're also the only one with the star. Now, when it comes time to fill out 3 Corps for the Battle of Antietam, we will have more than enough rifled weapons to do so. The Springfield 55s and the Harper's Ferries and whatever we end up capturing in the course of the next two battles will be more than enough for us to fill out the remainder of these two divisions with rifles. And I probably won't form a third cavalry division, but we'll see. I might. Um, and then at some juncture, I'll start pulling out what I want to get here. Probably... Uh, majors, light colonels, and full colonels. I don't know. I mean, if it's just that one general, I may as well pick him up as well. We'll see. I have not been finding finding a lot of great places to stick captains, unfortunately, which is a very cost-efficient way to raise officers up. 
Um, <clears throat> uh, let's just see. Yes, sir. All right, that's a pretty big efficiency. It's a small efficiency penalty, so it's not the end of the world. That's a much bigger efficiency penalty, so that is kind of kind of the end of the world. But what about over here? Yeah. All right. So it's a pretty cost-efficient way to raise officers up is to find units that are relatively kind of... You don't want this bar to get a lot smaller than this bar. A little bit, like here... This is not, it's, there's going to be a bit of a penalty, I'm aware of that, but it's not the end of the world, and these are the units that are not going to be an issue. These are two, um, 7th used to be an ordnance unit, but now it's a howitzer unit because I had a bunch of 24-pound air howitzers that I could buy in the uh, armory before this battle, and 8th howitzer already was a howitzer unit, but I bumped it. Um, from 8 to 10 guns. Uh, I'm looking at 10 guns kind of being the standard battery or bit, uh, gun brigade size. Um, looking at 250 or 300 being the standard skirmisher size. Certainly amongst the skirmisher snipers, 250 is a far better number. And then you'll notice that the infantry has creeped up once again to 1400. Uh, in a handful of these units, that means that I've had to sacrifice quite a bit of stats, um, especially 16th, which was at around half strength before... Um, being bumped up. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Crampton's gap. So we're going to send 2nd Corps into the field. This is 15,000 soldiers, apparently, but that's, I think, the entire Corps, not the nine units I'll be able to bring. So we'll see. Our scouts report a small Confederate force guarding this gap. That's true. Must attack to secure the passage. Okay. Most of our forces are behind us by about a half an hour blah 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 getting ready for uh, Antietam so we've got looks like uh, everything from first core except for the sniper skirmishers who um, uh, they can probably catch up uh, so my intent is essentially to form here with the artillery and one infantry brigade and blast across the open force a crossing with two of them and then kind of try and take this position so that I'm shooting downhill. Um, I'll join them with the sniper skirmishers over here or theoretically in this position and firing across. And then the uh, three units I'll get from two div will come over here and be kind of the, the backstop hammer against which first, first core or first uh, division comes down to crush uh, the maneuver. As usual, pause and issue your initial orders, essentially sketching out the exact same battle plan I just described. Uh, occupy this cops, try and force a crossing here where it's unopposed, and then see if I can't work my way into an elevated and covered position to get you on the flank. Uh, as usual, I'm leading the attack with skirmishers because of their spotting ability, but also because of their cover ability. Um, they're likely to draw the ire of what appears to be the Georgia artillery. Um, and skirmishers, especially skirmishers in wood or woods are going to have just phenomenal cover. And then there's the fact that skirmishers already experience a mm, defensive buff, I guess is the word I'm looking for here, but I'm not actually really sure. Um, they, they just take less damage from gunfire. I, I don't know how else to put that. Uh, and then so essentially what's going to happen is once 7th gets into position, I will have 2nd here to sort of support them. I'll take the skirmisher companies from uh, 16 and 6th and push them across with these units. Um, but Cobb has decided he wants to come down and play. So I'm going to give ground with the skirmishers from 2nd. This is not the kind of place I want to be fighting Forest fighting is the sort of terrain where the Confederates really can maximize all of their advantages, especially the ones that the AI gets in terms of stamina recovery, the unit size, the general higher quality of the individual units, etc., so forth and so on. And uh, I just don't want to mess with, with any of that if I can avoid it. I'm going to pull the uh, howitzers back a little bit. I'm in danger of losing a gun or something. 
All right. But I do need to push the skirmishers up so that they can see things. That's all they're really doing right now is just spotting for me. If they try and cross this creek, there's going to be a brief period wherein they're in that, um, the sweet spot, so to speak. Um, and they're going to get, they're going to get shot, uh, where they have got no cover. It doesn't look as if they're going to occupy that space. I could back up and bait them into it, but I kind of don't want to at the moment. All right, so 16th is going to kind of run interference for 6th. And hopefully Cobb has decided that this is a, a mistake. However, that does not appear to be the case as both the 24th Georgia and 6th Virginia uh, are coming down to join us in the fun. Uh, 7th Howitzer is about to be uh, online, however, and things are going to get messy for the Confederates if uh, they continue to trade blows with me in that kind of a scenario. The, I guess, 7th Howitzer Brigade was one of the rock stars of Second Bull Run. Um, they were in the vanguard and really managed to put a lot of hurt. All right, you really got to back up, guys. This sort of move maneuvering could could easily start to get tiring for these troops. I'm lucky that they're, you know, um, experienced vets with good training and good stamina and all that kind of fun stuff. So it won't be so bad, I don't think. But it, it could still get messy. Excellent timing on the reinforcements. Uh, okay. So we have a general line of engagement. Interesting in the game, it titles them the 24th Georgia and 6th Virginia. I would imagine that these are supposed to be regiments, if that's the case. Okay, so we have our... our the rest of our troops, essentially. Uh, what? What the hell are you doing here? One. You said nine. I gave you nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <gasps> oh, no. You're supposed to be more cannons. Oh, what? No, oh man. Why is there anybody from third division here? There's. Hmm? What? It's saying that eighth howitzer is here. Are they just not on the screen yet? Oh. Did I get a gimme? One? Yeah, that gives me a 10. Well, shit. I should have had... Uh, I should have had... Um, two full divisions then. Uh, I mean, I guess... Man! Sorry, you guys are... Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of... Not sure how to process that. Oh, man, that sucks. I mean, it's whatever. I'm glad you're here, but these guys aren't ready for the fight. Okay, well, they're going to be... They're going to be occupying seconds place, essentially, as cannon guard at that point, then.
Wow. That's a skirmisher unit. Holy shit. What the hell? Oh my goodness. That is a skirmisher unit. Woo! All right. Ooh. Um, that's a bit nerve-wracking, actually. Okay, so you've got atrocious stats, but frankly, you shouldn't be here. I feel weird about that, but there's not really anything I can do about it right now. Okay, so... Yeah, you just keep shooting them, you shoot them, you shoot them. These guys probably don't have a meaningful offensive in them. Yeah, six Georges already kind of calling it a day. I'm nervous about the number of losses this unit suffered, but I mean, I'll manage, I suppose. Okay, that's good. Why? Give ground, see if you can't buy yourself a few seconds. I don't think it's going to be a thing. Well, if it's any consolation, pretty sure Cobb's about to evaporate. Actually, maybe not. That was kind of an unimpressive volley. Are you in melee? You're probably in melee. To their credit, they are getting some good to good uh, good depth. They are almost certainly going to lose. There's too much support here for them to really kind of do anything. But we are going to be worse for wear as a result. And this is taking, I mean, part of it's that I'm playing on slow motion, but. Uh, come on, you got it. Oh, I've already detached the skirmisher's shit. Okay, things are going to get real messy here for them in a second. Yowza. Oh my god. Oh, that was brutal. All right. And they never threatened this side of the river again. <laughs> Shit, see if you can't get shots off on Cobb. Why not? You're in the range where I would consider the 24 pounder to be not super duper mega effective, but if we take the general out, things get things get markedly easier very quickly. Like they're in the worst possible defensive terrain. I don't understand. The AI should not be defending that particular farm. They should be here, or they should be here, probably. I don't know. I don't know where I'd fight this, actually. I don't think I'd defend this spot. This doesn't look like it's defensible. Oh, they've got two general. They've got two? This is supposedly two core? 
I don't know if I believe that. Now, I suppose ideally I'd be kind of occupying this position too, so they didn't really have a way to kind of to go anywhere. But this, if you're here, this suddenly gets a lot less good, and I only have so many guys. But if they're going to let me shoot their general, I mean, I'm not going to stop them, I suppose. Uh, that said, I am probably going to get third, like right over here, where they can just kind of do their thing from relative safety. Yeah, you're fine there, actually. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's let second rest. They've taken enough casualties as it is. Frankly, they've done their job. Man! Oh, that's rough. Okay, well, great. Interesting. They're already running out of ammunition. I'll probably try and see if I can't get like a volley off and then fold them back in and just call it a day with the skirmishers up there. Volleys into the cannon. I want the second Georgia artillery. They don't believe in numbers in Georgia, apparently. Time for Tom Cobb's unit. Man, who's got wounded? Someone uh, was that a division commander? I guess it must have been a division commander. Yep. All right. Oh, that's excellent. All right, twenty third. You shouldn't even be here, but let's see if we can't get you over there and just kind of do the whole support thing. These units are doing great. All right, so I suppose I can do this kind of uncontested at this point. I thought 
thought I had the time. Yeah, I actually probably do have the time. Yeah, this is just such a punishing position for the Union to occupy. Like, their whole position just crumbles the second you, you get that. And this is a, uh, it, this is a not insignificant amount of dudes over here. This is a significant force, but they're so far from, like, the meaningful part of the engagement that as long as I can keep them busy, I'm, I'm pretty okay with... I guess I wouldn't be, I don't want to leave them. I don't want to leave them that many casualties, that many guns. Um, but I am content to mostly wrap up this. And then if I need to turn around and meet them here. Uh, yeah, actually. I guess I lied second. Uh, I thought I was done with you, but evidently not. Oh, I'm so bummed about these guys. Like, they're getting good kills and everything, but they just, they shouldn't be here. Nope, get in position. Keep going. You, however, probably can go up here and just cause untold havoc. I don't want to take the flag until I absolutely have to, because I'm I'm not sure. This might be one of those battles where, like, if you take the flag, the game ends or something. I don't want to do that. All right. Excellent. We got, oh, I, I'm i pretty happy with the coverage we've got in terms of, we. <laughs> at this moment in time, I feel like the Union kind of occupies all the terrain worth occupying on this particular battlefield. Or or has such a commanding positional advantage that, um, no, I should have been more careful about how I move them. That's 14 losses I probably didn't need to take. Well, you want to get bitchy about it. Every loss is a loss you don't need to take, but those are avoidable. There you go. Good job, 8th. Who's leading this unit? Just a bunch of sergeants, basically. Who's in charge of this circus? <laughs> yeah. So, um, I think something Compass said in his video, like after after Shiloh, or perhaps it was after Malvern Hill, the Union can kind of really go on the offensive, and that's absolutely the case here. I really feel like um, now that I've got a little bit of experience and some rifles and whatnot in my in my troops, we're empowered to to take the offensive and the the army feels up to the challenge and it feels good and it feels like it's absolutely something that the army can handle and especially with that materials advantage that the union just generally enjoys this is going to be a bit of a grind Oh shit. Totally forgot about getting this flag. Hope I don't lose here in a second. 
Oh, okay. Woo! <laughs> that might have been embarrassing. <laughs> You poor guys. Oh, I'm asking. I'm asking too much of you. Yep. I. Uh, by the way, that was. I absolutely forgot. Just forgot to watch the clock in terms of like. Oh, you know, we need to. If we're gonna take that flag, ever probably now's a good time. <laughs> Just totally lost sight of it. All right, uh, let's see if you can't go over there. So they're more or less done. They just don't have anywhere to go, which is good. Um, yeah, keep doing your thing, man. Let's let the 12th retire. 19th has suffered at the hands of battle. I guess I need to be leaning a little heavier on second and 16th, well, second especially, than I'd originally intended. Yeah, second suffered about a thousand casualties. Or, I said a thousand. Uh, 400 casualties, give or take. Dare I? I do. Let's get some cash cap captures. Wow, good on you. These guys are standing up a little longer than I was expecting. I mean, well, that's... Okay. Yeah, that's a... Uh, probably a bad day. Wow. You're really... Not, there it is. Okay. Uh, I wonder if they will recon for me. Fifteenth North Carolina Infantry, presumably regiment, has surrendered. Uh, I find it hard to believe yeah, that some of these regiments were over a thousand men going into these battles. Every every account that I've read is that, you know, sure the paper strength of a regiment might have been a little over a thousand, but the real life strength of a regiment was probably something more like three four hundred in most cases. Uh, so eighteen hundred to. 75, 82, no, 7 to 1, pretty good, okay, give or take, give or take, 6 to 1, I don't know, somewhere around there, um, yeah, way heavier in second, so basically the, the Vanguard all took pretty heavy losses, 12th as well, 19th, yeah, okay, um, eh, 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 I can get complacent about that. It's not great, but it's what it is. Um, I did lose a general, but I gained a general. I don't know if that's really a gain or not. I did gain a two-star, which is pretty cool. Um, Kelly Walton, who has been with us since, I think, the very first battle, is wounded but still alive. Used to be a major, now he's a general, so, you know, good for him. Captured some more Harper's Ferries. So that is an indicator that the army that we are facing is well-prepared for these kinds of fights. Also, very exciting, captured some Enfields. Um, 
This is uh, a wonderful, wonderful um, cav carbine. Now, 44 isn't enough to do anything with, but hopefully this is an indicator of what I can expect to be capturing in the near future. And if that is the case, oh, man, am I excited. This is one of my favorite, favorite cav carbines. It's one of the reasons I like playing the Confederates is they have access to this and that makes their carbine or their cav just phenomenal more napoleons whatever i've got a napoleon unit i'll, I'll bu bump it up if i need to uh and you know that's uh crampton's gap leading up to antietam gained a bunch of dudes gained a bunch of money gained a bunch more dudes which is fantastic gained some rep which i don't really know if i'm going to be doing anything with i don't really care about any of these guns so maybe the generals george meade i mean he's a obviously a fantastic general very adaptive which is cool um, let me see. We need to prep for a full core to fight at South Mountain and then again at Antietam the day right after. Okay. 20 units. Mm -hmm. And I talked about what I wanted to do here. I'm still not really sure. I had six brigades per core, but I can't bring 24 brigade. I mean, I can't. I just, I can't. You know? I can't bring 24. Can't do it. So, no matter what, I'm leaving some of my guys behind. I just, I don't know. I don't think it makes sense. Not right now. Um, so, if logistics actually works, that might be useful. I've got medicine all the way up, which is really, really great. I'm very happy to have that as high as I do. Economy for guns? Again, I'm not mega hurting for money, which is the same argument I'm going to make about politics. Um, yeah, no, let, let's keep doing economy. And then I think the thought process in my mind is that by the time I start really needing to worry about bumping up training, uh, basically by the point that enough of this army is experienced where, you know, even a tiny handful of green recruits really just massively negatively impacts the stance of these units uh, at that point I might want to take a look at using some vets and trying to offset the experience loss that comes with that um, but in either case uh, actually I'm not going to do anything with two core we're going to go ahead and send I core into uh, the next battle and I don't aside from topping the units off I don't think I need to do much to I core give them some new officers, that kind of thing. I'm actually, I was actually pretty happy with the James. The James performed pretty well as a uh, 20 pound, a poor man's 20 pound parrot, basically. Uh, although I do probably have access to plenty of parrots. Six. And then I could buy, no, we can't buy any. I've got a parrot unit, don't I? Yeah. How'd you do? Pretty good. You were shooting gun. You were shooting cannons or officers the entire time. So you're, you're never actually going to get particularly big, huge kill numbers. But why don't we go ahead and do that? So yeah, good, good poor man's parrot. The Napoleon unit, another unit of twenty-four howitzers. Uh, oh, I don't actually have any more twenty-four howitzers. Twelve is fine. Ten. Boom. There's a good 30,000 just spent on guns. I'll bump you when I can, I guess. And then, you know, a lot of these units aren't going to need a lot to top them off. Um, good lord. Look at the stats on these units. They are... They are mighty. Mighty, mighty units. Good gravy. When do we get the Black Hat Brigade. I would be willing to bet money it's after this battle. Um, yeah. All right, cool. So uh, in terms of, I'm probably going to cut a lot of that rambling. We'll see. Um, I don't know. It might be fun. I might leave it in. In terms of army composition strategy going into Antietam, um, this is pretty much it for i -Corps. This is what you're going to see. I'll fill out the units as I fill out the units. Um, I'll see if I don't need to pull generals from some of these units and kind of push them down or whatever we'll see about that 
Same deal over here. Okay, cool. Division commander got two stars, which is excellent. Um, I don't really want to have two stars and commands of divisions just yet, but, I mean, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, I like Grant, Fiasco, McClellan. I want probably to buy George Meade just because, I mean, you know, Gettysburg, basically. Uh, but I don't need to, need to, need to. So, we'll see. This is the composition for two core. Um, why? Oh, okay. Got it. Yep. We're good. I was very confused there for a second. Yep, efficiency's fine. Back to your, your parent division. Man, who ended up coming? Was it the 22nd? No, it was a 55 unit. 20 randomly the 23rd. Like, why not this unit? The one that's just the next one along in the chain. Why not them? I don't know. Uh, whatever. Anyway, so that was Crampton's Gap. We're going to go. <laughs> we're going <laughs> to. I am in a mood, apparently. We're going to do South Mountain in the next video, and then we're going to eventually. I, I'm almost certain I'll split Antietam up because it is a long bitch of a battle. Or I'll just speed it up three times, and we'll just watch it all in one go. Um, either way, uh, let's take a look where we are as far as my objective of maintaining their numbers. So they're. Call it 54. Um, 15 and 15 is 30. So we're not even... We're actually not that far off, actually. Around 40-something. 40 40, around 50-something. Uh, if you can tell, I'm not a numbers guy. So assume this is at full strength because this is a pretty good approximation of what full strength looks like. So... Call it 16 thou, call it 16 thou, that's 32. Call it 16 thou. I, I mean, that number's going to go up. That number's got to go up. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So this is the baseline for scaling. Then, I mean, you know, there's that to think about. All right, so this is Fiasco. Uh, it was Crampton's Gab. This is Ultimate General Civil War, the Union Major General Let's Play. We are preparing for the finalization for the second to last step in the Antietam campaign. And I had a great time. I hope you did too. It's Fiasco signing out.